Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. As always, make sure you subscribe on whichever platform you're listening to this. Could be YouTube, Anchor, Transistor, Google, Apple, wherever you are, make sure you're subscribed. I believe that helps with the algorithm and people finding it more. Make sure you share it, including the link to wherever you heard it or you think someone else will hear it, as well as the very words of God that are being read aloud to you today in the King James Version or the KJV, beloved by some, hated by others. I'm more neutral, but there's something poetic about it. And of course, support you can support by being a donator at patreon.com slash tawahado that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash t-e-w-a-h-i-d-o you can also subscribe to the newsletter which is a little broader at aksum.substack.com a-k-s-u-m dot substack.com today we are reading from numbers chapter 16 why on earth would we do that it's because we are still in the epistle of Jude or the epistle of Judah or the scroll of Judah, if you will, Judah and Israel, two kingdoms that make up what we know today as Jews of the period of the first century, which is the greater context of the New Testament world. And so it's a very important part. We covered the book of James or the scroll of Israel, the scroll of Jacob already. And so we're going very slowly through Jude and Jude happens in the verse, uh, in the first one to thirteen verses, to quote directly Cain, Balaam, and Korah. And if you have to search through your Bible to know, you find out that Cain is in Genesis four, which is why last week's episode was with my cousin Jonathan Simmons. And then he quotes Balaam in order, and then he says Korah. So Balaam is actually from Numbers chapter twenty-two. And Korah is from chapter 16 of the same book or scroll. So I said, let me do those. And then we'll see how Enoch fits into the picture when we get back to Jude and do verses 14 to the end of Jude. But for now, we're learning about Korah. You know what rhymes with Korah? Torah. So Torah is known uh, by some people as everything, including the Talmud. It's uh, known by others as everything, including the Tanakh, which is Torah, Nefuvim, and Ketuvim, or the law slash instruction, the prophets, and the writings or the wisdom literature. But in another context, it specifically refers only to the first five books, what scholars call the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And of course, those are the Greco names that we have come to know and adore and memorize. The Hebrew names are the first few verses. I actually wish I had memorized what they were in Hebrew, and maybe one day that'll be a project and a task for me. The Samaritans accept it. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, everybody uh, all the groups I'll, I'll mention later, they all accept the first five books, which is great. So anyway, uh, without further ado, I'm going to read for you just the first 30 verses. It's a doozy of a chapter. There are 50 verses. So I'll read the first 30, and then we'll have a little bit of blabbering about me, about some of the notes that I took. And remember that this is all in the context of verses 1 to 13 of Jude, where in his epistle or his scroll, he references false teachers who are leading people astray, and he parabolizes Korah's rebellion in order to instruct people in his time and his day to stay away from false teachers. So you're not going to understand his message unless you understand Korah's rebellion. And of course, for the greater context, you're going to have to read all of Numbers and all of the Pentateuch. But for today, let's settle for chapter 16 of Numbers, verses 1 to 30, KJV. Now Korah, or Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abriham, uh, Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. 
And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him, even him who he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do take you censers, Korah and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? And he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also, for which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord? And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very wroth, and he said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow, and take every man his censer and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, two hundred and fifty censers, thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregations against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they get up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. So you now have the homework 
to go listen to in an audio Bible or go read unto yourself verses 31 to 50 of number 16 and hopefully the entire book of numbers. Now let me say a few words and we'll end today's episode. Korah took men. He was a leader and he led other men. He brought other men to rise up against Moses and Aaron who are stands stand-ins for the Lord. So he did it to rise up against the Lord himself, the Lord God, the Lord of hosts. Woe to him. Rising up is not bad. It is not good. Rising is functional. If we look at our liturgical rubrics, be we Anglican, Latin rite, Greek rite, or Afro-Asiatic rite, we find the phrase arise for prayer, stand for prayer. The Arabic for standing up in the case of the resurrection of Jesus, al-Masih um. In the Aramaic of the New Testament, we hear to the little girl spoken, talita kumi. In the Amharic and Ge'ez languages, we, we have that word. We use a different word, tansa'a, but we also have this root for kum. A standing thing is a right thing, a beautiful thing. It is a, a stance that somebody takes. I examined the Hebrew and it says, and I delighted when I saw that. I examined the Ge'ez and we saw the same root here. But uh, actually, what's interesting about the Ge'ez is that it's translated from the Greek Septuagint. And so this word, is actually he opposed they opposed them or they stood against them wakomu would be more similar and wayikamu and wakomu sound very similar they're cognates there and it's another beautiful thing they rose up against the lord the one thing you don't want to do is rise up against the Lord. You want to make your rising functional by rising with the Lord against the Lord's enemies, not against the Lord. A dangerous thing about these men is that they're called princes. You don't want to boast in your biology because if you remember the lineage of Jesus, if you just look at all of Galatians, all of Isaiah, the Lord's scriptures are against human biology because it all goes back to Adam and Eve. And so the silly kind of preferences we give to our tribe in a biological sense are not just racist, are not just supremacist, but are against the Lord. These people are also called famous. They're also called men of renown, which calls to us Genesis 11 and the Tower of Babel. You don't want to be a man of renown. You don't want to be famous. You don't want to be a prince because you're going to be in trouble. Moses falls on his face. And in English, this means shame or embarrassment. But here, it's not shame or embarrassment. It's not uh, the butt of a joke. It's not slapstick comedy where they get to laugh at Moses. No, Moses is praying. This is Semitic scripture. It has its own context. And he's praying to precede the prophecy from God. In his prophecy, he tells them to get their mahatot. The mahatot in Hebrew is the same as the might and in Ge'ez. It is the censer or the thurible. We know it well from our Orthodox liturgy, but it is not a construction of the Orthodox. It already existed in the, Can the Canaanite pantheon, in Canaanite paganism. You could find it in the so-called Far East or in the Orient, in the Taoism, the Hinduism, the Buddhism, the various isms of the Orient or the East. You find it in the pro-Black, pan-Africanist so-called conscious community and their usage of sage today in the 21st century. He repeats this word, mahatot, censors, multiple times. It's very important. And so now when you look at the censor, maybe you'll remember Korah's rebellion, and you'll make sure you do not count yourself as a man of renown and that you do not rise up 
against the Lord and that you do not listen to false teachers, to false leaders that guide you against the Lord. Later on, we see the repetition of this word, wa yakarib, wa yakarib, which is very close to the guz, wa karba. This karb, the Q R B, is nearness, being near, closeness, proximity. It's the same root as our word for communion or sacrifice, which is qurban. And it is the idea that when you are communicating with God, when you are sharing with God, when you are participating with God, when you are in fellowship with God, you get ever closer. So the Lord, in the midst of him drawing you, these people to be closer to him, in the midst of him allowing them no small thing to serve beyond service, to slave in his tabernacle, to read his word aloud in the community, and to have this wonderful priestly service, they took enmity with it. And they said that they had enmity with the wilderness. They put it in contradistinction with the land of milk and honey, and they used repetition. They said, you've given us a wilderness, not milk and honey. They say, what do you want us to die here in this wilderness? And it's ironic because that's what happens to them. They will get consumed in a moment. They will be witnesses to a new thing, to the earth swallowing them whole, but through the intercession of the less bad people, the leaders will be singled out. The leaders will be selected because leaders get a greater judgment from the judge. They are rebelling. This is Korah's rebellion. They are rebels against the leadership of God. And woe to them and woe to us if we do likewise. Glory to God for all things.